We'll start with a background video on the Deinococci family. The Deinococci appeared on Earth billions of years ago. This ancestral life form managed to survive the extreme conditions during the initial stages of the planet's formation, desiccation, heat, and radiation. Over time, the Deinococcus gradually adapted itself to its environment and developed extraordinary abilities. Exposure to harsh conditions, such as extreme temperatures and gamma rays, damages the DNA of most living organisms, eventually killing their cells. However, when returned to normal conditions, the Deinococcus is able to stick together fragments of its broken DNA, putting them back into the right order. In less than three hours, the harmed bacteria return to life and start multiplying as normal. It's this hardiness found in the Deinococcus which makes it perfectly suited to industrial applications. In nature, bacteria often exchange genetic material. It is the ability of the Deinococcus to repair its own genome and therefore survive, which probably enabled it to evolve into a true genetic mosaic, assimilating DNA from other bacteria and even more complex life forms. Among the many capacities the species acquired, one is of particular interest to us, digesting plant biomass. The Deinococci are not only able to digest glucose, but also complex polymers that make up the plant biomass. Here we can see the Deinococci multiplying and digesting birch xylem. On a molecular level, they use a series of enzymes that stick to the bacteria's membrane and cut up the polymers into smaller chains. These small sugar fragments are then brought to the bacterial cytoplasm, where other enzymes complete the digestion process. The Deinococci can be used as veritable bacterial factories, able to transform vegetable waste into industrial goods. Founded in late 2006, Deinov studies the Deinococci's incredible potential in order to develop new, ecological and cost-effective projects in biofuel and green chemistry. Now we'll move on to a brief history of D. radio Durans. Deinococcus radio Durans was first discovered in 1956 by Arthur W. Anderson at the Oregon Agricultural Experiment Station in Corvallis, Oregon. A sample of canned meat was exposed to high doses of gamma radiation in an attempt to sterilize and therefore preserve it. The meat later spoiled, indicating the presence of a surviving bacterium, later dubbed Deinococcus radio durans. In 1999, the Institute of Genomic Research published the complete DNA sequence of D. radio durans. Some characteristics of D. radio durans include that it is a polyextremophile. This means that it is an organism that can survive in multiple physically or geochemically extreme conditions. In the case of D. radio durans, this includes extreme temperatures of hot and cold, dehydration, acidic conditions, and vacuum. It is the most radiation resistant organism known and it also holds the Guinness World Record for world's toughest bacteria, and was also nicknamed Conan the Bacteria. Some other extremophiles in the Deinococci family include D. frigens, which can withstand low temperature, drought, and UV resistance. It was also first discovered in Antarctica. D. indicus is another, particularly resistant to arsenic, and D. geothermalis, which optimal growth temperature is between 45 and 50 degrees Celsius, or 122 and 113 degrees Fahrenheit. It is highly resistant to gamma radiation and is currently being tested among other extremophiles on the International Space Station in space and Mars. USU pathology professor Dr. Michael Daly is one of the foremost experts on Deinococcus radiodurans. He has devoted more than 20 years to studying it, 
and his team was able to isolate the manganese complex from Deinococcus and use it to protect a different bacterium's proteins from destruction by radiation. All right, so this is a picture of um, Deinococcus radiodurans, the bacterium which is very radiation resistant. And what you see here is a cluster of four cells. One, two, three, four. These light staining regions are the genomes, that's where the DNA is, and here the genome is dividing. One is going in here, the other is in here. And surrounding these genomes, something called the cytoplasm, and the cytoplasm is where all the machines of a cell are, all the proteins, all the enzymes. And mixed in with all these proteins in Deinococcus are manganese complexes. Those are free radical eating chemical machines that protect all the proteins. So after radiation, all these proteins in here are still working because of the manganese complex, which means that the cell can repair itself. For most other cell types, including our own cells, there are very few manganese complexes, which means all the proteins and all the enzymes after radiation are destroyed in most cells, which kills the cells ultimately. But in Deinococcus, all the proteins survive, and the genomes can be repaired. So you might wonder, how is Deinococcus radiodurans exactly able to withstand such high levels of radiation? Well, very high intracellular concentration of manganese 2 ions relative to iron Rather than providing protection against initial burst of radiation, high intracellular manganese acts against sudden increase in the damaging reactive oxygen species during the recovery from radiation. So, D radio Durans can receive up to 500,000 rads of ionizing radiation. The DNA then continues to break down into shorter strands regardless of the radiation dosage, and then the strands reassemble through the process called DNA synthesis, and the microbe is able to recover. So why would this bacterium develop a radiation resistance far above any naturally, occur naturally occurring radiation levels on Earth? While it's suspected that this trait evolved due to its ability to survive lengthy periods of dehydration, dehydration and radiation have very similar effects on cell damage in that they both cause double-strand breaks in chromosomal DNA, and D-radiodurans evolved to repair 1,000 to 2,000 DNA fragments per cell within 24 hours. This happens successfully due to redundancy in the DNA code. Its genetic code repeats itself so many times that damage in one area can be recognized and quickly repaired using the information from other areas. The images below show on the left the phylogenic tree of the Deinococcus and Thermus phylum and the D. radio Durand's visual genome on the right. So, some potential uses are currently being explored for D. radio Durans, including industrial applications, such as the fact that D. radio Durans can be genetically modified to aid in cleanup and partial detoxification of radioactive industrial waste, particularly from nuclear weapons manufacturing. Some biological applications include that derivations of the DNA repair mechanism are being used to produce simple synthetic organisms. Some informatic applications. In 2003, it was discovered that data can successfully be translated into DNA segments, then inserted into D. radio Durans. That species can then be subjected to radiation as normal and retrieved without error 100 generations later. For example, the song, It's a Small World, was translated into such code and exposed to radiation and then recovered and played back successfully. So more on the radioactive waste remediation. D. radiodurans has successfully been employed in bioremediation efforts for mixed radioactive wastes. Those containing highly toxic mercury, mercury 2, 
can use strains of D-Radio Durans to effectively reduce those toxic mercury levels to less toxic volatile elemental mercury. Another strain developed later could detoxify both mercury and dangerous toluene. So Deinococcus radio durans is also being studied in space because the bacterium's inherent ability to survive in harsh environments, including vacuum and freezing temperatures, led, the, led to the conclusion that it can survive in space. NASA has taken interest in the potential of increasing astronauts' survival skills. This can include such abilities as producing medicine, clean water, and oxygen. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've learned something of value about Deinococcus radiodurans.